Well, hello there, and thanks for watching the latest episode of our YouTube travel series as we take you to the fabulous regional Victorian city of Bendigo. Gosh, so much going on in this city, a great cultural scene to explore, some fantastic historical attractions, fine food and wine, all will be revealed over the course of this video. We have 10 tips for great things to do. So without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome to Bendigo. One of the things you'll notice about Bendigo is its wealth of period architecture, including the old post office, which was built during the gold rush of the mid 1800s. It now houses the Visitor Information Centre, so make this your first stop on arrival in town. From there, take a stroll through beautiful Roslyn Park up to the Poppet Head Lookout on Camp Hill. Originally constructed at one of Bendigo's richest mines, the tower was installed here in 1931. The view from the top is magnificent, and this is a great way to orientate yourself early in your stay. A short walk from the tower will bring you to the town's preeminent cultural attraction, Bendigo Art Gallery. The building itself seamlessly melds the old and the new, and the permanent collection is a diverse mix of contemporary art, indigenous works, and a cache of colonial art befitting a town whose fortunes were built on gold. The gallery also stages blockbuster touring exhibitions, which have focused on fashion, photography, and many other genres. Bendigo has a rich Chinese heritage, which dates back to the gold rush. Thousands of Chinese prospectors headed to local diggings, and many stayed to build new lives in Victoria. Their story is told at the Golden Dragon Museum, which features a classical Chinese garden. Inside the museum, you'll find what are believed to be both the world's oldest and longest ceremonial dragons. To learn more about the history of gold mining in the region, drop by the Central Deborah Gold Mine. Basically our tours give you a real life experience of what it was like to work underground in a hard rock mine here in Bendigo back in the 1940s and 50s. For the miners working in that era, very labour intensive, very hard work, very difficult and very dangerous conditions that the mine is in. So the original gold discovery here in Bendigo was 1851, um, reached its peak by about the turn of the century. Um, the Central Deborah Gold Mine commenced operations in September of 1939 and closed in December of 1954, so just over 15 years of operation. Uh, they got about 29,000 ounces or 929 kilograms of gold. Unfortunately, the mine was unsuccessful. The mining company never recouped its original investment and that unfortunately saw the end of mining, not only here at the Central Deborah, but also the closure of the entire Bendigo Goldfield after 103 years of continuous gold production. History buffs will also love Bendigo's vintage talking trams. Climb aboard a fully restored heritage tram car for a hop on hop off tour of the city's main attractions. Informative commentary is provided along the way. For an all-round introduction to the Bendigo wine scene, head to the Wine Bank on View, which occupies a former bank. I purchased the building from the National Trust and they had a criteria that had to be met, which meant it had to be open to the public and they wanted something that was a, um, uh, social and uh, a few other things we had to meet with it. So that's where I came up with this idea to open a, the wine bank. And we, we um, focus on a lot of local wines, Bendigo Heathcote region, 
Um, we're sort of right in the middle here, so it makes it easy for people if they've done a few wineries during the day, they can come here and try the rest of the wines here if they if so be, or purchase them here and have a meal. We make a, an effort to choose the wines that are unique and hard to get. Uh, you can't just buy them at your, at your local bottle shop. They're, they are, you know, we're, we're pretty specialised in what we do here. And we've built a menu around that. Um, our, our food is very wine friendly. Um, and we have a diverse menu. Our menu goes from Italian, um, Korean, uh, Vietnamese, whatever it might be. We're, we're not afraid of any cuisine. We'll offer it and we just keep it within the, uh, so it works well with the wine. Building 1876 was last occupied before us in 2004. It closed down as a ANZ bank in 1974. So it was vacant for 30 years and there's a bit of that in Bendigo. And with the, all these new restaurants coming on, they're filling a lot of these spaces, which is a great thing. Originally it was a union bank, which started in 1876, but it's a great old building. It needed a lot of work before we could occupy it. But yeah, a sensational old building. Bendigo has a fabulous cafe culture and it's best experienced in quirky Chancery Lane. Pull up a pew at El Gordo, which does amazing coffee along with a relaxed menu of Spanish style sandwiches and tapas dishes. Further up the laneway, the Dispensary Bar and Diner is a great spot for a drink after a hard day of sightseeing. Choose from dozens of whiskies and gins, over a hundred different beers and an extensive cocktail list. The Dispensary also serves up a diverse dining menu, from casual bar eats to upscale European-inspired cuisine. And finally, find time during your stay to stop and smell the roses in any of Bendigo's regal parks and gardens. Roslyn Park is one option and encompasses the popular conservatory gardens. The Victorian Conservatory was constructed in 1897 and has featured in thousands of wedding photos ever since. For more ideas for amazing things to do in Bendigo, just head to our website. <laughs>